I was watching the Rogue Invitational and in a workout, a specific workout, the hunting haggis, I just noticed that the muscle up on the log, it highlights and exposes a type of muscle up that needs to be performed on, on the log in CrossFit. We teach basic hollow arch kip mechanics for all your foundational movements and then we progress that up from hollow arch, kipping swings, pull-ups, chest to bar, toes to bar, um, bar muscle up. And they largely have the same mechanics. Some of them have different degrees of extension and ranges of motion. There is the glide kip, there's the traditional hollow arch kip, there's the hybrid where you can kind of do a mixture of both. But I've just pulled up a video of, of a couple of the athletes performing some of the muscle ups and now this is not even everybody, so it's just a very small sample size. But I think it's just a good indication of um, citing some of these things. Now I'll preface this with a better bar muscle up on the log is going to be with the traditional hollow arch kip swing and I was pretty excited about it to be honest because for a long time there has been like that great area around the glide kip slash the hybrid glide half glide half hollow arch. So I've got a video here uh, firstly of Justin Medeiros and it's just a couple of reps showing and I think the first thing that I want to see and say is that he starts with his foot on the mat in the hang position and I, I don't even know if he starts in a dead hang to be honest or if there's hands on the rig or the log and then a kick off of that. Um, so I don't know how they're, they're citing that. But because he does that, it's very, very hard for him to start with jumping mechanics from a hollow position or hollow catch and then drag forward to arch. And already in this freeze frame here, you can see that his foot is very far in front of the bar. And what the log doesn't really allow you to do or like you to do is get too much of your body in front of the log and then rotate around the bar and it's just because of the circumference of the log. Whereas if it was the bar, it's gonna be a, a less uh, width and diameter, which will allow you a longer period of time to then circle your body back behind the bar as you're getting your propulsion up and over the bar. Um, the person that was beside him, it was like, it was so contrasting because the person beside him was Jay Crouch and he has a arch hollow kip on this position. So he, he has the more traditional, um, bar muscle up and the entry especially. Um, what I like about this is that you have to have tension throughout the whole movement. Those portions of a traditional arch kip require tension. In a glide kip, you can fall without tension and you can allow for the, the propulsion or the pendulum momentum to do all of the work for you. Um, I won't say that I'm, I frown upon it or anything like that. I just think that it's cool to have to differentiate tools in your belt and be able to use them at different times and be exposed uh, if, you, if you don't know and when and how to kind of use those um, times when you, when you do need them. So right here with this freeze frame, uh, Jay in his arch position, beautiful. And then as we go back, he pulls himself behind the bar Let's pull down, good. Knees drive, good. So he's in the air chair, but he's behind the rig already, and now he can propel his hips up in forward motion to the bar. Yes, probably could stay a little bit more vertical, and, and it would lessen that chicken wing. But the fact of the matter is, is that he is in that traditional arch kip position, and it makes that rep a little bit easier for him. Moving forward, you have Haley Adams here, and if you look at this frame here, she's in that very horizontal position, and so. That, her entry, I mean, she does kind of start in, in the, um, well, she does start in the hollow position, but her momentum was still dragging back. I think she probably would have been more, benef she would have had more benefit to start slightly behind the bar, but catch in that same position. Um, not really the most tight arch position. It's more of a drag, body meets the shape, but it's not with tension because there's, there's just a lot of looseness in the body. Um, the feet go back, there's probably a little bit too much global extension through her back. Um, we'll talk about that sooner. But then in that horizontal position, there's just no way that you're gonna get the body, those feet to now rotate around the bar and allow you to be up on top of the bar. Um, whereas if that was a regular bar, of course, again, it's going to be smaller in diameter and it's going to allow her a longer window of opportunity to get her hips a little bit higher and then as the hips are getting higher, the feet are naturally dragging back behind the bar with her shoulders naturally dragging forward. So it's like a seesaw operation. If you're on two different ends of the seesaw, weight on this side will make this scale tip up. Because she can't get into that position of scale tipping down because the log's essentially in the way, she can't get enough thrust or momentum forward. Now, bear in mind, they have just got off a 1,000 meter pretty 
you know, hard row at maybe an 8 out of 10 effort with 30 heavy thrusters as well. So we can't be fully harsh on them. But what also comes from this pattern too, if you get into that horizontal position, as you go to turn over, your momentum is actually still hitting behind you as you're trying to rotate yourself forward. And that often will cause a chicken wing um, for some of, the, some of the athletes as well. And that's just because there's too much space between them and the bar. Um, moving forward, we have Laura Horvath. Now this is kind of a funny one because if you look at this arch position, she has a beautiful arch position, but she is too much. So this is something that I coach. There's, there's, there's a lot of global extension here or it's essentially just overextending through the spine. And if you're quite mobile, which she clearly is, um, if you're waiting for in range to feel tension and that's your cue slash feedback, uh, your tactile cue to go back now, you've got enough tension, propel back the other way. If you're waiting for that moment and you're more than mobile for the requirements of that movement, you're actually going to extend past that point of when you should have gone back. So what ends up happening is that you've gone so far forward, we'll use the left and right scheme, so you've gone so far forward that when you go back to get to the hollow position and go up and over the bar, your propulsion ends up going a lot behind you in a horizontal plane. So if you were to extend that, it's like a pendulum knocking the, the balls on a swing and they just get further and further away from each other. Um, Pull-ups and all and chest bars, especially kipping uh, and toes to bar, if you were to do that manner, you would, by rep three or four, be already out of rhythm and you wouldn't be able to connect the next one. A bar muscle-up is going to hide it a little bit because every rep essentially stops at the top. As the force should get greater and greater and greater, but because you're blocking it off, you can kind of get away with one each time and you have to stop and restart. Um, now, the funny thing here is, well, I don't know if it's funny, but the, the interesting thing here is, is that when Laura now goes back through, she doesn't quite... Like you can see here on her turnover, she's already trying to pop the hips, but the propulsion is going behind her. And that's why she catches quite low on the chest because she's really closing the space between her and the, and the bar. Now the cool thing is she's so strong that she can hide that and, and you, you probably wouldn't even pick it up. But the fact of the matter is if I had to take her back into um, a training session and figure this out, I would learn and I would build tension through that point of range that I would only want her to stop it. But I would also learn um, or uh, try and get her to learn and it's not just her, it's, it's, it's whoever's in this position, um, that where her end point can and should finish rather than just going for the sake of going and ending up in this like big parachute horizontal position um, just for the sake of waiting for end range. It's not necessary that she needs to go to that shape. Um, again, great strength and she can kind of mask the fact that um, that's, that's even an issue there. Um, she does have a traditional arch kip, but just an excessive position, and I hope that makes sense. Um, one more time, we'll go again, drag in, and then as she's p pulling back, um, her propulsion is going behind her, but she's trying to get forward, which will mean that she ends up higher than the bar, but the catch will be low on the bar. Very interesting. Now, finally, you've got Tia, we'll watch it in real speed, and it just looks like a normal muscle up, right? Now, of course, that the log is so thick, it's going to require everyone to have some sort of a false grip, which is going to block off some of the forearm, which also negates some of that mobility or extension through forward. Um, it would That's even more problematic for the glide kip style, because if you're trying to glide and get more of your body weight through in horizontal, you essentially have to roll your hand from the top of the bar to go maybe at best vertical with the bar, not definitely underneath the bar, but you don't have that access to roll it all the way around that bar in the same way you kind of do with a, a, a smaller diameter rig, uh, normal rig, normal rig, regular rig. Um, so Tia, again, look at that arch kip. She jumps into arch position and it's, it's not overextended. So she can stay in this nice little vertical plane and get herself back around the bar nice and easy and she catches double hand overturn, uh, elbows are stacking nicely, pulls behind the bar, hip pop, thrust back forward to the bar. So we get into arch position and often people start to pull too early so they start to pull from the arch position but remember you need to go back and pull to hollow 
as you go air chair, so the shape is hollow with air chair and hip propulsion through to the turnover. So that's um, that's what tear does. <laughs>